This circuit is happily collecting nuclear fusion energy via a solar panel and pumping it through a QX5252, very common solar cell circuit. And it's going out to this nickel metal hydride battery. Wait a minute. There is no nickel metal hydride battery. Instead, we've got a resistor, a couple of diodes and a capacitor. Hmm. And then, well, normally the QX5252 would draw on that nickel metal hydride battery, let's say at night time, and, uh, and pump it out to an LED. But on the other side here, we have a super capacitor. What's going on? Let's measure a few voltages and find out. So outside, this thing is pulling around about, I think, two volts, just over two volts. Uh, we won't get that here. In fact, we're not really getting anything here. Oh, there we go, 0 0.73. That's from my studio lights, uh, which are pretty weak. Uh, and so, yeah, but two volts normally and 160 milliamp, uh, which is important. And then coming through on the other side of the QX5252 is 0.64. And that would normally be feeding it through to a nickel metal hydride battery, which is missing. Uh, and we'll talk about the circuitry in there um, in a bit. But on this side, we've got... 3.98 volts. So this capacitor, which is, what have we got here? Super capacitor, 3.8 volts and 120 farad is full. And it was empty at the start of the day, but, uh, and I had was worrying about it for a bit because it was sitting on 2.4 volts for such a long time. I'm not sure the charging profiles of these things, but finally it started to pick up and now we are at 3.98 volts. So what does that mean? Well, it means that this thing can go on and power a microcontroller to do whatever you want it to do. Um, yeah, nice steady output for a long time. And the elimination of a nickel metal hydride battery along the way. So <laughs> when I first thought of this, I thought, oh, this will be pretty simple. I'll just put a capacitor. Let's pull this guy out so you can see what's going on. I'll just put a capacitor uh, on this side where the battery is and everything will be fine. And it wasn't. Uh, what actually happened was that the capacitor filled up and I had a, I think I got up to uh, 1,000, maybe even 2,000 at one stage uh, microfarad capacitor just sitting here and its voltage would shoot up to around two and a half volts, which I thought was terrific. But the problem is that this QX5252 sitting in here doing all the work uh, has a limit of, I think, around about 1.5 or 1.6 volts. So it really needs this to be a, as much as possible, a battery. Uh, and then it's used to pumping out to a battery, not to whatever this is. So the capacitor, to start with, just a capacitor by itself, didn't work. Then I got the bright idea that possibly one of the problems was that um, a normal battery would have some internal resistance. And looking up online, nickel metal hydride, yeah, it looked like one or 200 uh, ohms is not unusual. So I put a 220 uh, ohm resistor in here. Uh, and it still wasn't working. Uh, and the final thing it needed to do was really have a voltage drop. So I've just got a couple of 1N4001 diodes in here. I think originally I had a shot key and a normal diode. And uh, what I was, the theory was that um, the uh, power would come in out of the QX5252. The electrons would uh, make their way along a wire and then have a voltage drop uh, and then go through the resistor to the capacitor and come back again. I'm not sure uh, of the final arrangement for these things or even the final values. I mean, this I believe is a hundred. Let me just have a look. I just tried a few different values. Uh, can I read that? I'm not sure whether it might even be less. I think it might be 47. Uh, it says 16 volt. Oh no, it's a hundred, a hundred microfarad uh, on the little baby capacitor there. Um, but I think I've been as low as a, uh, a 47 here and it still works. So I've still got some combinations of these things, not just the actual components themselves, but also the order in which they go to, uh, to work on. But lo and behold, after um, a little mucking around, what happens now is the theory anyway is that QX5252 is convinced that this is a battery and uh, pumps power out to it. And I've got a jumper here because this version of the QX5252 can be on the whole time, and it needs to be. If the sun's out normally, 
a solar, um, what would you call it, like a solar toy chip, of which there are many, but the QX5252 is certainly um, a pretty ubiquitous one. It normally turns off when the uh, when the sun's out. It's not going to pump anything out to what would normally be just a simple LED. It's just supplying power to the to the battery, or in this case, the lack of a battery. But I needed it to be on the whole time so it pumps out power. And so um, this jumper allows me to do that in this position. Uh, the QX5252 will be pumping out power even when there's uh, solar uh, energy available. So pretty cool. So the solar panel pumps it through. This thing isn't a battery, but, but behaves enough like a battery that the QX5252 is happily convinced that it can uh, store and retrieve energy from there. And then it pumps it out to um, to this, which is, well, this is the old board for the Badook, but the Badook wouldn't necessarily be there. Um, and uh, we've got our usual thing. I think this is a Zena diode. I, it's supposed to be SMD, but I was mucking around so much with the different types that I think I ended up uh, just putting on these through holes on these SMD, uh, SMD pads. I think this is 4.7. Uh, and this is a Schottky, which uh, again has like a 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volt drop uh, and prevents the energy from going backwards. I, I'm actually wondering now, looking very closely at the QX5252 data sheet, whether or not I actually need this. I mean, that's heresy, I know. But while I was diving deep into that data sheet, I saw, I think, that it has an internal Schottky. Hmm. So I'm not sure if that component is actually required. But anyway, net result after all of that, happy days, very, very happy to see this, is that my super capacitor is fully charged, sensational. And so now um, I can go on to use this energy. And uh, what I'll do with that is that I've got, I'll, I'll put a, a Paduk downstream of that. The Paduk will check the charge on this capacitor and we've already seen a video like this before, so I'll, I'll post that up. That was one of the uh, the three miracles that needed to happen for this whole circuit to work, is that the Paduk needed to be able to detect that this thing was empty. In other words, there was no solar coming through. could probably even detect it from the panel, actually, uh, and then say, okay, I'm going to draw on power to this and, and do what I need to do, which is to, in my case, light up a, a fake candle circuit. Um, the other miracle that needed to happen was, would this be able to power the Paduk all night long? And uh, I did a video on that one, so I'll link that one up as well. Uh, and in fact, what happened was that it went all night and into the next day. So uh, that was, a, I think, a 250 Farad capacitor, if I still got that one around. Yeah, that was this fat boy here. Uh, yep, so it's 250 Farad, uh, and this one is 120 Farad, so I'm figuring that that should do. So the advantages are that uh, there's no messy nickel metal hydride. The nickel metal hydrides on a good day maybe have, I don't know, 500 to 1,000 cycles, and they lose efficiency along the way. These guys probably have got uh, maybe uh, conservatively, I don't know, maybe 100,000 cycles, um, and of course, their charge profile remains pretty flat and solid uh, and reliable. The um, the next steps are to mess around with these uh, with these components, with both their uh, the type and the number, and also uh, the arrangement of them. Uh, but at the moment, it's working. Uh, and I will mock up the whole thing with the Paduk turning this off, so the whole thing working. Uh, and then if that works, I'll probably send, I'll probably design a PCB around the whole lot and send it off. And uh, wow, that'll be a bit of a leap forward. Can you imagine that? A solar uh, toy, if you like, uh, in my case, a candle uh, going uh, night and day, if you like, uh, with the, um, yeah, with no nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium or any other nasty sort of chemistry uh, battery in the background. These things are also incredibly light, incredibly small. Um, yeah, very impressive. I'm pretty impressed by that. In case you're wondering, you know, will that work? Uh, let's have a look. I've got my little, um, here we go. Can I stick this in here? This is uh, a little LED, uh, so I get the polarity right. It should, yeah, it should light up, and it will do that, uh, as I said, for, um, you know, for hours, days. Um, that uh, supercapacitor 
um, yeah, pumps out power for quite some time. So that is, um, that is amazing. That is the circuit working for this week. Uh, we'll continue to see this one uh, crop up from time to time. Uh, we'll see you next time.